Greetings, happy Thursday to everyone out there in Cyberland. Today is May the 16th at 8 o'clock p.m. And it is a Thursday. Today is episode 7 of the DigiPirate podcast. And we're going to expand on yesterday's topic, making money with e-commerce. And today we're going to discuss affiliate marketing buying product to resell, or drop shipping. We're going to discuss each one of those in detail and kind of do a side-by-side comparison. So please bear with me here for a few short seconds, and I will be right with you. The DigiPire podcast airs Monday through Friday live at 8 o'clock p.m. Be sure to visit us on digipire.com. Okay, before I get started, I wanted to make sure that I clarified something. I realize there's another component of this, the the whole e-commerce thing, and it's building or creating your own product. I'm not going to discuss that here. Actually, I'm not going to discuss it tonight because I think it deserves an entire episode just revolved around that, and I think that... When you create your own product, I think I think that needs to be like you know like level four or five or you know e-commerce e-commerce four point or, or something to that effect. I don't think you should start out with creating or building your own product. I know a lot of the gurus claim that you can get stinking rich off of it and blah 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 blah. But I really think that you need to have a good foundation in affiliate marketing or e-commerce or or Basically, you know, everything that I'm talking about today, you need to have a good foundation and everything I'm talking about today in order before you do something like that. That is very complex. You know, you have to deal with suppliers. You know, you have to deal with Alibaba, AliExpress or whatever. And, you know, especially with the Chinese tariffs, you know, mixed into it now. It might even be more tricky. So I would highly recommend that you steer clear of that. And, you know, choose something from, you know, being a, do affiliate marketing, buy a product or resell, do drop shipping, do that first. And then maybe you can, once you are successful in one or all three of those, then move on to creating your own product. And maybe by then this China, the, the tariff thing will have resolved itself or be resolved or, or whatever. Which, by the way, I'm going to talk about next in our e-commerce news segment. So just a second while I pull up some web pages. You are listening to the DigiPire podcast. We air from Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. If you want resources and show notes, be sure to visit our website at digipire.com.
Okay, so let's get started here. I'm going to explain to you basically the the different approaches that you can take to e-commerce. You can get involved with it via affiliate marketing, you can buy a product to resell, or you can drop ship. And first I'm going to explain to you what exactly each one of those are and what each one entails that you entail what each one requires you to do and the advantages and disadvantages of each one. So the first one I'm going to go over is affiliate marketing. In affiliate marketing, you are basically selling other people's I mean you're basically getting a commission for selling other people's products. So for example, if you go to finishline.com, if you go to sears.com or any of the big box retailers or even some of the even some some of some of them you probably never even heard of, most of them have if they're smart have an affiliate program and you can sign up you, you can sign up and every time you make a sale on their web every time you sell something from their website you make a commission so say for example you had a, a website or a blog and you had a an ad for from finish line for you know a pair of shoes so someone clicked on your ad on your website and bought the pair of shoes from finish line you, finish line you would get a small commission it's usually less than 10 percent i'm not sure what finish line finish lines is what their commission would be i'm not even sure what network they use i'm not actually going to look that up what network i'm assuming they have a affiliate program Let me see. i love shoes so i should know i know they do i'm just making sure they still do i'm gonna see what network they use they use different networks to manage their affiliate program. Most of them don't manage it in-house. They use an affiliate network. And the advantages of an affiliate network are they have they have the infrastructure, they have a you know a team of of marketers that that market their products. So it's like a one-stop shop, and it's much more efficient than if Finish Line did it themselves. And then they have recourse as well if something were to go awry. So I don't see, see their affiliate program. I'm trying. I don't see it. Find a store, customer care, return policies. Sometimes they don't advertise it. Anyway, I don't see it on finish line. Maybe Foot Locker does. I know one of them does. Maybe, um, which one? One of these big bucks. Which doesn't mean Finish Line doesn't have one. It might, it might just not put advertise it on their website. To, to, to this. Uh, I don't see it here either. Where was it? I just saw that they had... Anyway, one of the affiliate... One of the... I don't see it on Foot Locker either. But if you go to Commission Junction or CJ.com, you can find, if you, I'm not sure if they'll list it. But anyway, most of your big box retailers, or most, a lot of your retailers will have affiliate programs. And so you basically put ads on your website, your blog or whatever. And if someone makes this, if someone clicks on your ad from your website and goes to the advertiser's website and purchases something, you get a small commission. A lot of people will create little stores, basically. They won't have a, they won't have like a, they'll basically create a store, a portal from based on a base with all their products. So say for example, you go to sharesale.com. That's another big of, of affiliate mar affiliate network, and you can download a feed of their products. And so they will build a store around those products. So, say for example, they want to have like a little niche. They want to sell religious jewelry or something. They will find a store that sells jewelry or religious store, and they will create a niche store themselves. 
that that for all intents for uh, from it looks like from the outsider if you go to their website it looks like this store is selling the jewelry themselves when in fact it's just basically a a big ad and it's going it'll go to the to the advertiser's website and google has gotten wise to this and they 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 usually require that you have you know reviews or some content added onto it or or something so it's a little bit more involved in that but used to, in the, back in the day, you used to be able to throw up a, a data feed from a store and do just a little bit of SEO on it, search engine optimization, and you could rank for you know very obscure long tail keywords. Like say for example, someone typed in "red big red pot" or "big red coffee pot," then you your shop might rank for it. And then they'd go to your shop and they'd click on your coffee pot and then they'd get diverted to the actual website that actually sold it and processed the sale and all did did all the, the legwork and customer service and all that kind of stuff. And you got a small commission. And that required that you, like I said, when you do something like that, it requires that you have some SEO skills. And you know, you can do that. You can you can learn how to do that all yourself. There, there's there's classes on Udemy.com. There's classes online. There's you can do, you can watch YouTube videos on how to do it. You can do a lot of trial and error. But in addition, if you know you can learn all that, but you also need to know how to build a website. I mean, you can pay someone to build a website, but you're going to some you're going to have to. It's going to it's more, it's a lot more. Um, what's wrong? It's a lot more. Uh, I cannot think today. It's a lot more overhead than you know. Than you're than it's, it's, it's just a lot more overhead. You want to keep the overhead as low as possible. So it would probably behoove you to learn how to make a website yourself using WordPress and plugins and that kind of thing. And it's very easy. It's not something that that's ridiculously difficult to learn. You can just take a class and you know through trial and error you can pretty you can put a, up a website using. WordPress and a few scripts that will take a feed from the advertiser and create a store for you. I mean, it's out there. It's not difficult to do. And one of the advantages that I have listed on the outline for this episode is that you can scale that. When, you, when, you, when you're working in affiliate marketing and you're building stores via WordPress, you can scale it. And you can do you know, a lot of SEO on it. You can, how you do SEO, you write articles, you, you get backlinks, you, you get on directory sites, and you try to add as much value to the, the site as possible by doing reviews, by adding content. And a lot of times people will mesh content, and they'll grab content from everywhere on the web and just kind of mesh it together. And they'll even use uh, things that will... What's what I'm looking for? Scripts that'll basically jump up a bunch of stuff and make it look unique to Google. But the problem is if Google determines that your website is spammy or a machine, the content is machine generated, then they will dean your site and basically throw down the search engines and then your website's dead. And you're not going to make any money off of it. So a lot of people will use the crash and burn method to in affiliate marketing to to build websites and make as much money of them off of them as you can and then when they die move on to the next one they'll have you know 5 10 20 30 100 of these go- going all at one time of course it's a little bit more complex than that but you get the gist of it okay so that's affiliate marketing in a nutshell let me see what else i have to discuss about it um, affiliate marketing, yeah, affiliate marketing typically requires SEO knowledge. Like I said, you can get SEO knowledge. You don't have to have some big fancy degree to get that. It's it's fair. It's easy to understand. You can build a website, and that's the best. If you're going to get into affiliate marketing, you really need those skills. You need to build a website with with WordPress. You need to know about Linux hosting, how to upload files via FTP, how to install plugins. All that kind of stuff is very easy to learn online pretty much for free and as far as SEO you can do the same thing you just you want to try to stay away from all the fluff and buy a bunch of courses that you don't need and all that kind of thing I have some recommendations if you go to the website digitalpire.com I have it under resources under self-learning and I have some things that I have found that I recommend that people do 
if they want to get into affiliate marketing and, and build websites to, to reach their other people's products or whatever. And again, this is physical products. It's a whole different ball game when you um, oh God scared me. I thought I wasn't I thought I wasn't online. Oh my God, scared me. It's a whole different ball game if you are selling digital products, but that's something that I'm going to talk about tomorrow. So yeah, that's affiliate marketing in a nutshell. You require you, you need some SEO knowledge, and you pretty much know how to build websites or someone that, that you don't have to pay a lot of money to, to to build them for you because you want to keep the overhead as low as possible because you can't be you can't afford to to spend four or five hundred dollars building the website. Um, it's going to take you forever to get your money back. You're going to make your money on by scaling up. You're going to make a little bit of money off each one, and you're going to have 20 of those, or 30, or 40, or 50, or 100. So you really need to scale, okay? And like I said, that's affiliate marketing, a primer, telling you what it is and what it requires to get that started. Okay, I'm going to talk about the the next part. I'm going to talk about buying and selling, buying products online to resell. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. Just give me one second and I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Listen to this nice little music while I'm gone. Be right back. Just a second. You are listening to the digipire.com podcast. Be sure to visit us online for resources, show notes, or to ask questions to be answered on a future podcast. And sometimes I will even answer them personally. Okay, so before we get started, let's talk, let's discuss a little bit about, let's talk about all the news that is news in e-commerce. Today, the big news is, the past few, several days actually, the big news is, are the Chinese tariffs that Trump is imposing on goods. And I wanted to, to kind of get some, kind of find out what the, what the, the big retail stores are are thinking about it and so I went to MSNBC hold on a second actually I went to CNBC to see what they you know what what they thought about it and the headline said that you know Walmart was concerned about it and Macy's is concerned about it because of course most of their I'm sure a lot of their product comes from China of the 25 percent tariff on it, it's going to make it quite disruptive. What exactly did they say about it? Just a second. Here's a here's a headline. Retailers already planning for the 2019 holidays expected to get whacked by tariffs. I actually haven't read that one yet. If you want to chime in and, and let me know what the, what you think about the, the, the Chinese tariffs that the Chinese tariffs that, that they're imposing on us in retaliation for well, with Trump's tariffs, then you can click on the little chat button on the DigiPire podcast page and let me know what you think. It says that the key points are on this article, the tariffs in the U.S. have, and this is coming from CNBC, the tariffs in the U.S. have increased to 25% from 10% on a 200 $200 billion worth of Chinese goods, including furniture and some consumer electronics. So it doesn't include clothing, I guess, and knickknacks or food or, or whatnot, as of yet, anyway. It could hurt retailers already planning for the 2019 holiday season, which we already said. And the hike will also cost the average American family of four $767, according to a report by Trade Partnership. So... You know, that's quite a significant amount of money, $767. I mean, that's quite a big difference, uh, quite, a, quite a lot. 
And also, I'm quoting from the, the CNBC article, mass merchants, including Home Depot, Lowe's, Best Buy, Dollar Tree, mm, Dollar Tree, and Tractor Supply, I've never even heard of Tractor Supply, are believed by retail analysis to be most negatively impacted by the latest round of tariffs, which hits furniture more than anything else in the industry. So, that's interesting. Home Depot shares were down more than 1% Friday morning. Best Buy stock was falling about 3%, and Lowe's was down more than 1%. So, very interesting. That's the take on that. Let's see what, what the what Walmart says specifically about it. And again, this is coming from CNBC. Walmart said it's monitoring tariff discussions closely and they're hopeful that an agreement can be reached. I was listening to some, I was listening to, um, oh, I can't remember what I was listening to. It was something the other day that, you know, someone said that it could drag on for years. I don't see that happening. I think that, I just don't see that happening. Just a second. Okay, Macy's CEO Jeff Janet had some remarks Wednesday. He said it would be hard for Macy's to get to a place where you don't have customer impact if the additional tariffs go into effect. I saw something here about clothes. Macy's C CEO says it's hard to find the path where tariffs on clothes, shoes, wouldn't hurt shoppers. So, I mean... Macy's CEO Jeff Jeanette, I'm not sure how you say that, G-E-N-N-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, says an increase in tariffs to 25% on $300 billion in, in Chinese goods that's still being considered by the White House, which would impact apparel and footwear, would likely trickle down and hit consumers. Well, of course. When you do the math, it's hard to find a path through that, hard to find a path through that wouldn't impact customers, he said. It will affect a lot of apparel and accessories categories for both Macy's in-house brands and national labels, Jeanette said. It would be hard for Macy's to get to a place where you don't have a customer impact, he reiterated. I also uh, heard that people, it's still, too, it's still a little early in the game, that companies might consider basing, you know, keeping their, moving their supply chain out of China and into other parts of the world, like India. You know, India doesn't have the infrastructure that China has, of course. But anyway, it'll just be, it'll just be very interesting to see how it turns out. So that's something that you want to <clears throat> to pay attention to if you're going to play in this e-commerce field, e-commerce arena or retail or whatever. And it's something that you really need to look into or really need to, to, to stay abreast of if you're going to... If you're going to be in business in general, you need to... I think you need to, to keep an eye on the news and know what's going on in the world. I think that I think that's being just being a good business person. But anyway, I had a my I had a retail just a little bit of background information for those of you that are just tuning in or this is the first time you've you've heard anything that I've had to say. I've been in internet marketing or since since a prob since approximately around 2000 around end of 99 2000 2000 is when i took the, the big plunge and started making money online well basically i was selling i was selling stuff on ebay so i started selling stuff on ebay in 2000 i knew about it for a while but that's when i when i, I thought who in the world is going to find this little there's a little teapot that I had. Who in the world, this is, this is my rationale, this is what I was thinking back then. Who in the world is going to find this teapot under the, you know, the, all these items on, on eBay? Who's going, to, who's going to just find that? I mean, there's like a sea of stuff on there. I just don't, I couldn't imagine anyone finding it. I was just, it just baffled me. So for the longest time, I didn't do it. Well, my cousin, my third cousin was, and, or it was, He's still alive, I guess, um, was an antique dealer, and he was selling on eBay, and he was doing fairly well, so I was intrigued, and so I put up a little tea kettle that I found at a flea market, because I was going around flea markets and looking for stuff, because I didn't have anything personal that I could sell, and so I bought it for $5, and I think I sold it for like 25 or $30, something like that, so anyway, I made a profit, so I was hooked after that, so I started looking for stuff, I'd look stuff in the in my building, I mean, stuff people, stuff people are throwing out, 
one time a person threw out a popcorn machine and I sold it. <laughs> it worked and everything, but the a business downstairs threw out a popcorn machine and I took it and sold it. You know, I mean, it, I asked the people what was wrong with it. This is back when not everybody and their brother knew about eBay. And they told me what was wrong with it, so I put it in the ad on eBay what was wrong with it. And I got a pretty penny off of it. Um, I paid my rent for that month. I paid my rent that month with it, actually. And then I, and then I took it to, uh, it's called it's the, the UPS Center now, but at the time, it's mailboxes, etc. And I had them, I have to make sure I'm still in line. At the time it was mailboxes, or at the time it was mailboxes, etc. And I had them pack it up, so I made I made a pretty I made a pretty hefty profit on it. I mean, these things are expensive. You wouldn't believe how expensive they are. I guess they still are. I'm not sure. And then a friend of mine in 2000, he was really into arcade ar uh, arcade machines. So we bought and sold arcade machines, and we did really with, really well with that for a while. And then I started getting into other things. And started getting getting into affiliate marketing in about 2001, which leads me to explain. I want to differentiate between the two. There's basically two types of two things you could sell via e-commerce online. Two things you can sell online: physical products or information. And information can be anything from background checks, reverse telephone number lookups. Selling banner ads, you know, selling, uh, well, selling adult products. I'm not selling porn, basically. Anything like that. Anything that's transmitted online that you, there's not a physical product attached to it. And the other one being a physical product. You have a physical product that you're selling. Today, I'm only focusing on selling physical products. I'm focused on selling physical products via affiliate marketing drop shipping or buying to resell and i will discuss the same with digital products taking an affiliate marketing approach with selling digital products selling your own digital products via white label or private label rights or, or whatever and creating your own information product but that is for tomorrow's podcast actually i'm going to go over that but today, it's strictly selling physical products via affiliate marketing, buying it to resell, or drop shipping. Okay? So I'm going to go over that in just a second. Let me prepare for this. I have a couple more things i got to do, and I will be with you in just a short moment. You are listening to the digipire.com podcast. Be sure to visit us online for resources, show notes, or to ask questions to be answered on a future podcast. And sometimes I will even answer them personally. Okay, actually, first I wanted to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of affiliate marketing. I wanted to be very specific and very clear on some of the things that the good things and the bad things. Number one, with affiliate mar with affiliate marketing, if you go that route, it's not location specific, so <clears throat> you can run your business from anywhere. Whether you're in the middle of the ocean, if you're on top of the Empire State Building, if you're so lucky to have an office there, or you can work there, or just wherever. You you can be anywhere and work your affiliate marketing business, okay? It's easier, number two, it's easier to rank for long tail keywords with less competition. Think like database-driven sites. And long tail keywords are simply, like I was saying earlier, red, big red teapot or big red coffee pot or big red couch or, or whatever. That's a long tail keyword. And when you have, you know, millions of combinations then it's easier to rank for that because there's a lot of site there's a lot of there's not as much competition for those than it would be for couch. There'd be a lot of competition for the, the keyword couch. 
but if you had big red fluffy couch it might not be as competitive and there are tools that you can do to to find all that and all that kind of thing but that is a little bit more advanced for this episode and that's something that I can get in that I'll get into at some other point another advantage of affiliate marketing is it is easy to scale so is assuming that you can build a website and you can do it quickly and you know how to do SEO you can make you know five a day five a week five twenty a month and it's easy to scale up you can have you know five ten twenty thirty little niche sites that you have running at all the time it's like little workhorses or little salespeople that are working for you twenty four seven so that's the good thing about affiliate marketing that is is that it's easy to scale but there are a few disadvantages to affiliate marketing and the the one being it requires knowledge of SEO so you need to take some time to to, to learn SEO or search engine optimization you need to learn how Google works and and how to, to rank for keywords and you need to learn how to use some of the tools that I want that I will talk about in later shows that will that will help you rank for those sites or help you find the competitive keywords or the the the, the markets that, that that you can go into that aren't as competitive and another disadvantage is that like i said earlier it requires some knowledge of how to build a website these websites don't make the amount of money for you to be able to afford to pay someone 200 500 a thousand dollars to build you know to build one website it's going to take you a long time to get your money back you're going to make your money in volume. You're not going to make it off one site. So you need to be able to, to put them out quickly. You need to you know add content to it. So you can get that content. You can outsource all that stuff. You don't want to spend that much money on, on building the website. If you have that kind of budget, you need, to, you need to do it on a content. You need to use it for content creation. If you had a three to five hundred dollar budget, you can get a lot of content written for those websites. I'm talking reviews. I'm talking, you know, descrip- descriptions for the for the product or whatever. You can you can you want to use that budget on content creation. And again, that's something that I, I'll discuss at a later time. And another, this is the, one of the biggest disadvantages, or like the main one, is it takes a lot. It takes more time to see results. It takes more some time to see results than if you're selling, buying something to resell, or for even if you're doing drop shipping, it could take some time to for your site to to get some traction in the search engine and Google, the main one. It's going to take some time for people to find it and click on it, and for Google to do its work. So that's one of the biggest disadvantages. It takes a lot of time to see the results, and. The last two are their lower profit margins and then the other methods. You're talking about anywhere from 6 to 10% per sale. And Amazon is a good a f- good place to be an affiliate marketer. We have a database of millions of products. So I think their commission is like 8 10%, something like that. And so people build entire niche stores just from Amazon products. But that's you have to be careful with some of the things doing going that route as well. And again, that's something that I can discuss at a later time. And one of the biggest disadvantages, I think, for affiliate marketing is you don't own the customer database and you can't benefit from remarketing it to them. So I try to, on my little niche stores, all this stuff, try to, not try to, I do. It's a requirement for me. I mean, I don't, it's not live. I do this, it doesn't go live. Is you want to collect email addresses. So, there's different ways you can do that, but you'd want to make sure you, that you can, with an affiliate-driven site, you want to be able, to, you want to make sure that you squeeze every every ounce of the visit that you can. So, if someone visits your website and they don't click anything, you've lost that cust- that visitor probably forever. Or if they visit your site and go to the advertiser site, you're not going to get that visitor back. They're going to go to the the main site, buy the product, and you get like a a six percent commission but if you ha- if you intercede and put an email capture form or a, a chat interface from facebook or something to, to to capture their information you can remarket to them so there are ways especially now that you can that you can remarket to to 
people that visit your your affiliate websites. But those are the disadvantages and advantages. And now I am going to discuss... What was the next one I was going to discuss? Oh, uh, buying to resell. I'm going to discuss buying to resell. I'm going to open up a few web pages, and I'll be just with you in just a second. Just a second. So the second way to make money via e-commerce is uh, buying a product to resell. And there are a lot of places you can, you can buy to resell. I think a good place to start is actually in your home. So I've heard, I saw on a, a show one time that most people have about $3,000 in the worth of, pro, of stuff that they can sell online in their home. I mean, $3,000 is a lot of money. I can't remember where I saw that. I have it, I have it on one of my websites somewhere. I have it listed as a, as a blog post with my annotations, but... I saw that somewhere, and I think it's true. I mean, I don't have a lot of stuff. I don't buy, like, a lot of stuff or a lot of junk. But I have found that just from the people I know and from myself, that, that that seems to be fairly accurate. And so, I mean, even more places have come to come to be that you can sell on, like Facebook Marketplace, Mercari, so there's not just eBay and Amazon. They're not the only games in town now. You can sell, you know, in a lot of different kind, of, a lot of different places, you know, to to really to push your stuff. The only problem with being actually I want to talk about in the disadvantages section. So that's the most straightforward thing. If you want to find out some places to sell, if you want to to buy to resell, I have a whole section on my website on the on digitpire.com in my e-commerce. So in my e-commerce project, you can go there and go under projects, and it's the e-commerce project. And I have a lot. You can kind of follow my journey that I've that I've had for the past few years on selling that selling that way. And I have some of the you know some of the things, the problems I've run into with suppliers, with platforms I've sold on, and just all the things that you don't. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. All the things that you that you don't really talk about, so you can go, you can you can do that, and you can find more detail on that. I'm gonna have to wrap this up soon because I'm only allotted 45 minutes per day, and it doesn't carry over, so I can't make this too long. So some of the the advantages of buying to resell are their higher profit margins, and you have the ability to to research. I mean. So you can you don't buy things that are going to have a, a profit margin that you aren't comfortable with, and so you can research you know the, the products that are in demand. There's then finding suppliers is relatively easy. Those are the advantages. There's an abundance of marketplaces to sell on, and you see a return a lot quicker than you do with affiliate marketing. The disadvantages are. Unless you're using a, a Amazon FBA or you're selling Amazon, Amazon FBA being fulfilled by Amazon, <coughs> which basically means that you are outsourcing your fulfillment and customer service, then it requires a physical presence to ship and process sales. And eBay doesn't allow drop shipping anymore. As far as that, there might be a little, a few little caveats to that, so you might want to double check, but I don't think that they do. Another disadvantage is are if you sell the if you sell the same product on more than one channel, for example, if you list a product on eBay, Amazon, Bonanza.com, you want to make sure that you don't oversell or cross sell or whatever. You you, you don't want to sell the same thing in both places, and you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't believe how many times that's happened to me. You have to, you need to have a system in place, and there's websites that will keep you from doing that. But it will really affect your ranking and your 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 well being on that site that you're selling with, and they do not mess around with that stuff. So you need to be very very careful with that. Okay, so drop shipping is when you do not have you don't carry any of the inventory yourself. You're not buying in bulk and reselling. You're not buying to resell. You're buying from a supplier after you have already made the sale. So, for example, if someone went to your website, xyz.com, and bought a widget, then 
you get the order for the widget and then you order it from your supplier who ships it to them and you never see or touch the product. So you're basically getting money from your customer then buying the product so you don't have you don't have you don't have money tied up in inventory and all that kind of thing. And it can be very good that could be a very good situation. And an advantage of drop shipping is similar to and similar to some it's similar to affiliate marketing in that you do not have to it's not location specific so you can run your drop shipping business from anywhere and it's also similar to affiliate marketing you can you can scale so you can build a lot of niche websites very quickly assuming that you have the the know-how to build a website and SEO, you don't even have to know. You don't have to. You don't even have to know SEO. You don't have to be. You don't have to do SEO on a, a dropship website. You can just do Facebook marketing and all that kind of thing. You can advertise strictly on Facebook Marketplace or Google AdWords using their Google on Google Shopping. You don't even have to have. You don't even have to use SEO, which is a good thing. I mean, you don't want to be dependent on SEO because it can take a long time to see results. So if you want to quickly see results, you can build a drop shipping a website based on a drop shipping model, market on Facebook or Google Google Shopping and go from there. Which I can go into a lot more detail with that, but for now, I'm just talking about I'm just give basically giving you a primer and that's that. You don't have a you don't have to you don't have any inventory to keep. You don't have any up for inventory cost. You purchase and ship the product when a sale is made, and you own your customer database. Unlike with Amazon, eBay, and the others, you can use their email, collect their email address to remarket to them and sell them more product. I mean, it's easier to sell some. It's easier to sell to someone you've already sold something to than to buy a new, than to get a new customer. So, the conversion rate on repeat sales is very, very high. It's something that you just won't appreciate until you've actually experienced it. I mean, it's just it's just absolutely amazing. Okay, I am running out of time today. I'm not going to be able to go over the. I was going to review the the top Shopify the top Shopify top, some of the tools I use to find this top stores to get ideas, and some of the the tools I use for keyword research and all that kind of thing. And I was going to go over what approach might be for you. I will go over very quickly some of the questions to ask yourself as I end this. If you want to, if you want to do affiliate marketing, drop shipping, or buy to sell, you want to a assess your skill level. Can you build websites using WordPress? If not, are you willing to learn? B, how much time are you willing to spend on this? Are you ready to fail? C, what is your budget? You may be, you may be better off using some of the research tools I provide. And just buy to resell. That way you have an associated asset for the money that you've invested. So that way you can liquidate it very quickly, pretty quickly if you need to. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope that you've enjoyed and learned a few things from this show. Tomorrow on Friday, May the 17th at 8 p.m. sharp, I'm going to go over e-commerce but selling digital products today i was selling today we were going over selling physical products tomorrow i'm going to go over all the ins and outs of selling digital products okay that's it for me i hope you guys have a nice evening and i'll talk to you tomorrow bye bye